thank you guys. I'm super excited uh, to be able to have this conversation. First of all, we're, we're here in front of the amazing mural that, uh, that Everett uh, did a couple weeks ago. And um, man, we're just here having a conversation between two of the most talented people that I know. And uh, I just wanted to hear their perspective, uh, hear about their art and how Waukegan has influenced uh, their art, but also how the people in the community have supported and have uh, allowed them to kind of express themselves in very unique ways, Everett with his art, Angel with his tattooing. And it's, uh, you know, we're here on, on Belvedere in the shadow of, of Belvedere Park, where many of us spent many, many days and, and a lot of time um, as young fellas. But, you know, just wanted to make sure that we get a chance to hear Everett's story and also hear Angel's story and uh, just have a conversation that could be, uh, I think, a, a great way to, uh, to lead to more conversations. So I want to introduce, first of all, Everett. Everett is the awesome artist who put together this mural behind us, um, Everett Reynolds. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself a little bit and then, uh, and, then, and then we'll introduce my buddy Angel here. Go ahead. Cool. My name is Everett Reynolds, uh, at EVR underscore art on Instagram for all the young people, all the millennials that, that be on Instagram. <laughs> oh yeah, I forget we all got to introduce ourselves <laughs> right, right, with the right. hashtags and, and, then, and, the, um, and the ads. Yeah, I'm an I'm a oil painter, mural artist, uh, visual artist all around, um, and yeah. Cool, man. So we also have Angel, Angel Bustos. Uh, my brother, man, I've known Angel all my life, basically, and uh, and you know, it's because we're friends. I, I can't tell him how much how much of a of a talent I think he is. I got to keep him humble, so I got to remind him every time that he does things that aren't that great. But uh, but yeah, I'm super uh, impressed by everything that he does, and, and he has a great platform. So uh, Angel Bustos, man, introduce yourself to the people. Yeah, Angel Bustos uh, at. Uh at a <laughs> Angels Tattoo, A N G E L S T A T two, and I'm just local homeboy. Local homeboy. Local <laughs> nah, I'm homeboy. I'm a tattooer, graphic designer. I, you know, I help a lot of businesses around here with logos and, you know, put a lot of art in a lot of people. Oh man! All right. So man, I just want first of all uh, to hear a little bit about how you guys got started in art. Um, what inspired you guys initially? Um, for Angel, I know it's been a long trek. Forever, it's been a little bit shorter of a trek, but still, um, here we are, right? So, uh, man, let's start with Angel. Angel, man, uh, how, how did art start in your life, man? How, how did this come about? Man, I just started drawing um, real young. Um, for as long as I can remember, I was drawing. What were you drawing? Like cartoon characters. And then when I turned about 10, about 10 years old is kind of when I fell in love with lettering. Uh -huh. And um, I did lettering, like, grade school. I'm like book covers and then got to middle schools tagging up book bags but lettering was kind of the thing i remember being infatuated with like the old english alphabet yeah yeah yeah. and back then we had no resources so it's like going to the library finding an old english book or something and that's how i got the alphabet but that's pretty much how it was and you know just drawing real young and then just kind of just once you naturally have it once you don't once you don't forget how to yeah, do it you just do it for the rest of so how does how does uh, drawing old English letters in the library translate to tattooing? Man, that's kind of what started the tattooing. That's kind of why I wanted the tattoo was put old English alphabet on people. On people. On people. <laughs> uh, old English alphabet on people was kind of like the dopest, the illest thing to do. Got tired you of know. the book bags, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Book bags weren't. It wasn't permanent enough. <laughs> right, you right, know, right, you could right, throw that book bag away. But tattooing letters on people was kind of more permanent and more, you know, that, that'll last forever. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know it then. I just, you know, it just. Right eventually in a turn so off. so now that you're an old man and the statue of limitations are up you were just telling us a story how old were you the first time you tattooed somebody <laughs> i was 13 years 13 old years man. old <laughs> tattooed my brother you tattooed your brother huh probably <laughs> one of the biggest lettering pieces i've ever done <laughs> and probably the worst the worst, <laughs> <laughs> the worst biggest piece of lettering i've ever done yeah yeah so i was 13 years old when i did my first piece and then okay and so and so this started i mean tell us about that with your brother man that influence on, on what that meant and kind of yeah, so he, you know, he came home with a homemade tattoo machine. Someone taught him, taught him how to make it, and he was an artist, and I was, so naturally I had a tattoo. So I tattooed him, and then, you know, he kind of went from there and tattooed all his homies, and, you know, I was just on the side. I tattooed every now and then, and, you know, um, you know we just did it together through when I was in middle school, you know, eighth grade tattooing 
Thirteen year olds. No, 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 eighteen year olds only. Yeah, yeah. Only yeah. legal. <laughs> that's when eighteen year olds. Yeah, it was crazy. Man. Back yourself. then, you don't think about it. It just nah, happens. Absolutely you know, not. You know, it just happens. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you don't think about what. Do you remember right the first thirteen year old you tattooed? Um, no. 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 I don't remember the first thirteen year old. No. You know, I mean, how does that conversation start? Man, like, yo, hey, man, hey, man. <laughs> I heard you just got this machine, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you got a tattoo machine, man, everybody wants something, you know. Everybody's going to be like, yeah, I want a tattoo. Yeah, yeah we were like freshmen going to school with fresh tattoos, and everybody right. was like, yeah, I'm going to need right, one from right, you. Right, right, Didn't matter how it looked. Right, right, right. At that point, it's it was a tattoo, just tattoo, right? You know what I'm saying? You're a freshman with a tattoo. That's Hell that's yeah. dope. Yeah. So you were, cool kids. So you right. were 13. So you were 13. <laughs> how about you, man? How, how did art start in your life, man? What was what was the... Man, I, uh, I always had art in, in my life. You know, my brother's been doing it for a long time. And uh, so I've always seen it from him, you know, um, but it was never really my avenue. I was like focused on school and uh, my my curriculum and stuff. But I'd say like two and a half years, almost three years ago, I was kind of just, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was out of school at that point. Um, and I was just kind of looking for something to, to it's to like kind of escape from my everyday life you okay know, something positive to put my energy into and yeah, yeah, yeah. i uh i picked up a brush and got some paint i went to walmart got some paint some of the cheap stuff because yeah, i was like yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm not gonna invest a lot of money into this so i just got the cheap stuff and well, i started acrylics? huh acrylics did you start with acrylics yeah so I, yeah i started with acrylics i did like a small little canvas bro like it was literally like a two dollar canvas and uh what was the first thing you drew do you remember yeah, I did a, a skyline, a silhouette skyline. Okay. So like one of the easiest things, it was like a sunset with like the African s silhouette. Uh -huh. um, and then after that, I was like, this is kind of decent. So let me try it. Let me just keep going from there. And then I did a portrait with uh, acrylics. And then after that, I got into oils. I fell in love because with oils, you can do a lot of blending. So I started doing that. and. Ever since then, I've just been going at it, man. Really? So, about awesome, two years man. ago. And then uh, got into murals. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just, like I told him earlier, I'm uh, I'm real hungry for everything that has to do with art right now. Yeah, so. yeah. And what's crazy, like, this is your first mural. Yeah. You've never yeah. done a mural before this. Yeah, that's crazy. Nah, I mean, I that's did crazy. I Isn't did something crazy? in my garage, but it was like with spray paint and... Uh, they find me a lot of money for it too. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, I was like, nah, I'm not gonna touch any walls or anything like that. For so sure, this is my sure. first like big one. That's yeah. dope. That's yeah. dope. So and we'll get back to the mirror in a little bit, but you know, growing up in Waukegan, um, and you grew up. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Belize. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I moved out here when I was 12. Started Belize. high school. Wow. Yeah. So what was that like? It was. It was good. I mean, we uh. We were a little bit more fortunate, uh -huh. you know. My mom was a single parent, but she she worked her, you know, tail off. Right, she worked her tail <laughs> off, and uh, we were a little bit more fortunate. But it is a third world country, sure. So we still had our struggles and stuff, but it was it was cool. Yeah, what it prompted cool. the move here? Uh, my mom did. She just wanted she just wanted us to have opportunities. I feel like out there there's not as much opportunities as out here. Mm. Um, you know, simply because it's a third world country. But coming out here um, and giving us the opportunity, I think that was her main goal. You know. Yeah. Um, Does your family, do you, does your family have an art, art background besides your brother? Does your family? You know? Nah, no. It's nah. just it just came to us, my brother and I, like organically. That's crazy, honestly, both yeah, of them are yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Like, that's crazy be, but think about that like that that idea of perspective right so he said that you know they came to waukegan an area who you know from outside perspective you would look at that doesn't have a lot of resources doesn't have a lot of opportunity and you looked at it from a perspective from belize like you said a third right, world country right, with more saying, opportunity exactly right, saying yeah. there's more opportunity and yeah. you found opportunity right you found yeah. an ability to express yourself most and, definitely that's interesting man most definitely that's interesting so how about you man growing up in this environment um the art um what how did that connect how did you know where you grew up how you grew up affect kind of the art man i don't know like i don't i, I never really th reflected on mm. the journey sure it just kind of just happened but you know i don't know i guess being in the community and having the people that i had and 
having the, the, the young kids that wanted tattoos at the time, if I didn't have them, I wouldn't be, you, you know, where I am now. I couldn't say that I started at 13. For sure. Um, you know, if I was in a different community or in a different environment, I probably wouldn't have had a tattoo machine. Right. So, I mean, it, it's a blessing in disguise, but, you know, I wouldn't say it's the best, best blessing. You know, there ain't, ain't nothing cool about tattooing when you're 13 and <laughs> yeah. other kids showing right, up right. to school when you're 13, 14, 15 yeah, with no, tattoos. No, no, no. Like, that's not, like, the best, you know, best look, but, I mean, it, it <laughs> but with all of them, it progressed me, yeah. you know, so that something did cool, good come out of it. Yeah. And even though it's, like, even though it's not, like, the coolest thing, it's it still stared you away from from doing other other negative negative yeah, things for sure you know, definitely so. definitely kept me it kept a little bit of a drive it kept a little bit of a focus right it wasn't my my main drive right you know at the time um it's just something that i did and you know maybe looking back at it now i was more focused on it than i thought i was you know because i i literally always wanted a tattoo i wanted a tattoo all the time yeah. and just seeing people with tattoos that i did was like you know, ridiculous. Just like having this mural here. Like, this is going to last as long as it's going to last. Hopefully, it lasts forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you just don't think about that when you do them. It's like, you did it. It's, it's dope. You know? But a lot of these people still have those tattoos that I did yeah. Yeah. 20 years ago. Definitely. So, yeah. I, I hardly reflect, though, man. I never, I never really watch the journey or look back on the journey. It's just... Right, because the journey is still going. Yeah, you know? like, so I, don't, yeah. I don't ever... Th- yeah, I never reflect on it, so I, I I couldn't tell you how the city influenced me, but definitely my environment for sure. Just having the people that I had, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, without the people that I had, I wouldn't have been able to do as many as I did. Good. All right. All right. So tell us, man, how did uh how this mural come to be, man? How 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 did we get here? Man, I uh I was traveling quite a bit. You know, um, I was going to like L.A., Toronto, New York, a bunch of different major city is just kind of exploring and you know taking some time to myself and each city I went to I saw like dope art everywhere you know like dope murals everywhere and uh, I would come back here to Waukegan and I wouldn't see I wouldn't see that you know I'd have to go either to like to the city in Chicago so I was like why not put something up in the city you know, um, in Waukegan here, where you can't really see that like you do in in the major cities like Toronto or New York. Um, and at the same time, I kind of just wanted wanted to to impact a lot of people. You know, because um, with my art, I do it on canvas and I put it on social media and stuff like that. But it, everyday people don't see it. Sure. So like you know, people that drive past now can kinda see. Kind of like what we just right. having right now. We were just yeah. standing around and some guy just random Stop guy, by, older yeah. guy just this stopped is, by. Uh, man, this is I, honest to God, man. I didn't even know it was up, and um, my wife told me she had seen it, and I, I drove by it, man. I was like, oh my God, like, like Thank you. being an artist, like. You don't like, like you said. You don't see it here around town, right? Even when I see like a, a dope graffiti piece, I'm impressed because yeah. you can spend that much time on a piece on a wall, and it's, it's amazing. Yeah. But this is like, you know, commissioned and it's really, really good, and it's in our town, which is insane. Like, you don't see that, man. This right. is like a huge deal. Like, it's a big deal. Yeah, and I wanted that, man. Like I said, I just I wanted that. That's why I picked this location specifically. Like, I I honestly drove last year when I originally got the idea. I just took a day and I drove around Waukegan, just looking for walls. So how did it work, though? <laughs> I mean, who did you contact? How, I, how does something like this get commissioned or something like this get? So uh, I had the idea last year. Um, I approached the the building owner and, and you know told him my idea. Hey, that and I shout wanted. out to the building owner. Right? Yeah, yeah. Shout He's, out to the building owner because we're here, absolutely. no issues, and I mean to have Zuniga Auto, Auto Service. There you yeah, go, man. If you need anything, give him a shout I don't out. know what they do. But if you need anything, right. hit them up. <laughs> Probably auto service. Probably yeah. auto servicing, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, last year I came over, man, and I talked to him, and he he basically said, yeah, we could. I like that idea. I like what it represents, you know. But you still gotta get city approval. Yeah. So I had to go through that. But last year, I guess the scene kind of just like died out a little bit. Um, so. When I was traveling earlier in, in the in the year, I, I got re-inspired to to come back and revisit this idea. So I I went to the uh, director of PR. His name is David Montley. Um, real cool dude. He's the one that's that's been doing most of the other murals around in Waukegan. Um, 
He's but been doing them, or he's been finding people to do them. He 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 was a part of most of them, so okay. he he uh, was involved in painting them and, and okay. all that as well. Um, that's the one, like Genesee, the one by Genesee, the one, by Genesee, the one over here on Grand. Of Grand. Okay, yeah, okay. he he was involved in most of those. Um, but he's the one that pulled all the major strings, like got the the mayor's approval, building commissioner, uh, alderman of the second ward. Like he got all of that done for me, which is I appreciate that a lot. Um, and after that, I, I just went for it, mm-hmm. put it on the wall, and, and so got started. Tell us what this guy means to you, man. What is what is what is what is the uh, the space kid, right? It's a lot, man. Yeah. Honestly, it's a, yeah. yeah there's a lot to it. Space Kid, I think, Space is the name, right? What are we calling him? The call mural. Him? The mural is Dream Big. What so are you Dream him? Big mural. Uh, he's just a Space Kid. Space yeah. Kid. He's, there's. I didn't put a name on either of them, and I also didn't put specific fa- like faces on them. Yeah. So a lot of people say this looked like my son, or like earlier he said this looked like Baby Jordan. But that's crazy though. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> right. You know, hopefully, when you do do more of these, you know the 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 character that you do put up on a mural is influenced either by the area that you are that you're in sure. right or you know the community that you're in right like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that reflection is almost as, yeah, yeah. as important as the mural yeah, yeah absolutely no, I, I agree man so. i think the the representation right that the people of color uh yeah. being being so prominent i think that that's important man and that's that's a good point that you make man i think that that, yeah. that obviously you know that i think that resonates more with the community you know when you when you walk by and you kind of See somebody that looks like you and right. you know, that could be you. you know, right. That's kind of cool, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's what I, I wanted us to represent a lot. Um, you know, and that's kind of the main part of it is is to dream big, and that's why it's called Dream Big Mural. So uh, I feel like I chose an astronaut because that's kind of like the farthest reach of a career that you can have. Yeah, I definitely. think that's like one of the hardest things yeah, yeah. To, to become is an astronaut. Like saying a ballerina, right? Like no one's a ballerina. Right. Like you don't make money being a ballerina. Right. What does that mean? Yeah. Even, I mean, being a ballerina is cool. That I mean, I want people to understand that you could be whatever you want to. For sure. You know, not yeah, just yeah. an astronaut, but whatever you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's why I chose the farthest reach, just, you know, to, to show people that whatever you want to, you can still dream, dream about that and try to become that. But also, I chose uh, the minorities because of the community. Like you said, we're in a community that I believe we got a lot of mi- minorities, a lot of immigrants, um, like myself. So I kind of wanted to highlight that, so, and I and I chose him. But I also chose uh, the suit is a homemade suit, so okay. it kind of it kind of symbolizes uh, not being, you know, fortunate enough to to afford. A That's suit. So, dope. so he created. So those the are like suit. two liters, right? Two liters, yeah. Two you liters, um, and then the helmet's kind of like out of cardboard and tape. Okay. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to to show that even though you don't have, you know, money or a lot of money or the resources, you could you could still create something like this. That's dope. You know, um, and that's kind of. That's kind of why, that's why I dope, did it, yeah. Man. Yeah, man. Making your own future, dog. That's, that's kind of what it is. Thank that's you. dope, man. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, man. Sure. That's dope. Well, we got another guy that pulled up on us. Um, Eric, man, if you want to come on in and join us. Um, oh, let's, look, he let's brought his own chair. Room for him. This guy oh, brought his own chair. it's all good. It was brought for him. It was brought for <laughs> Um Eric, Eric doesn't. What's up, man? Uh-huh. Eric doesn't have a mic, man, so you guys so can share a mic. Sure. You Let's guys can share a mic. Um, <clears throat> Man, Eric Reyes is uh, another uh, local artist. He's a musician, spoken word artist. Um, man, tell us who you are, man. Oh uh, man, my uh, yeah, like I said, uh, like you like said, my I name said, is Eric, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> like you said, uh, uh, my name is Eric Reyes. Uh, pretty much raised here in in Waukegan all my life. Uh, uh, been in bands. I'm a musician since the age, age of eight. Been writing since probably that long too. Um, and then just really started honing in on spoken word last last four or five years, um, and just uh, just trying to share the passion. Yeah, there you go. There you go. With the, snaps. <laughs> the spoken word is nice, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So you say you uh, you grew up here? Yeah. Where'd you grow yeah. up? I grew up here in Waukegan. Um, we started off. So we came from Chicago when I was like four or five. My dad didn't want to raise three boys in the city. Right, right, right. And so uh, we so he came chose out Waukegan. here. Waukegan. Yeah, he chose Waukegan. Right. <laughs> At that point, Waukegan was, you know, it was what it was back in the early '90s, but. Um, but yeah, man, it was, uh, uh, we, uh, we grew up over there on, uh, on Pine Street, the apartments over there on Pine Street. And then we, uh, we kind of moved around. We went, we ended up on Western, uh, right in front of the old YMCA okay. for, for like 
10, 12 years. Oh, that was a good part of town, boy. You that was a good part. Of, but, nice. but check this out. But check this out. We <laughs> ended up not having a home for about three years. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. We moved around from from uh, from hotel to hotel, literally. Like, we went to La Villa Hotel and, and went to the Harbor. And then we ended up at... Uh, at uh, uh, the extended stay in Gurney, and then and then uh, we ended up at uh, at another hotel in Gurney. Um, uh, yeah, but we were, we were we didn't have a home man for for a couple years, bro. We just it was it was seven of us total. It was five kids, my two parents, seven of us total in a one bedroom hotel, man. And but you know what? Like, I believe that God had our back the entire way. You know what I'm saying? So and so that the moment of uh, even though it was the good side of town, you know what I mean, Western everybody, you know for nobody, sure. but. There was there was moments we literally didn't have food. Yeah. This is what you know. We came from stuff like where we couldn't dream big. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's yeah, why yeah. this knowing about you, uh, knowing about what you did, it, it really means a lot to 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 me. It means a lot to the community, that. man. Yeah, so for sure, for sure. So we start off with a question to these guys who was like, how did you start in music? How did the arts kind of you know? Like, what was the beginning of that for you? And kind of you know how that translates to what you're doing now? So. Uh, so my dad, my dad was a, a lifelong musician too. He played okay. the guitar, played the bass. What kind of music did he play? Uh, you know, old Puerto Rican nice, music, man. He, nice. he plays his old rhythms, man. You, you get him on the guitar, he's like, ding, lee, lee. Yeah, like, he's go. like, you know what I'm saying? It never changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but so one one Sunday, my dad my dad was a pastor, and uh, one Sunday morning he uh, he asked me. He said it was early, like six seven o'clock in the morning. He said, hey, "You want to learn how to play the bass?" I was like, "Sure." I thought it was going to be like, you know, Monday or whatever. He was going to teach me a couple chords. And he, we got to church. He tuned it up. I didn't even notice. He tuned it up. Then he calls me over. He said, uh, here, you're going to play this this morning. Mind you, this morning meant like 20 minutes. You know what I'm Ooh. saying? <laughs> the service started in 20 minutes. So I'm like, for real? And I was like, all right, well, let's go. And so he, that, Monday, that Sunday morning, we're playing, and we played three songs. He, he's telling me, go up, go down. He said, just follow me. Go over. You know, come back down. No, go back one more. You know, I was I was off key. You know, I was everywhere, right? <laughs> but but ever since then, man, I picked it up. And if you know any Spanish coritos, right? A lot of that stuff is the same. You know, the the, the chords are repetitive. But but that's what made it easy for me. Um, and then I kept going from there, man. And I, I've been playing ever since. And then I got into um, I got into playing. I was a musician by necessity, right? The church they needed a drummer, so I was like, okay, I'll pick up some sticks and play the drums. I played the drums. Yeah. Um, and then I did that for a while. I teetered back between that and the bass for a couple of years. And then uh, in 2002, I was a senior in high school, and I, I went to a show and, and they needed a percussionist. And since I played drums, you know, I was like, ah, oh, Puerto Rican, this is in the blood, right? Smooth so I picked up right? some bongos and, and I just started playing the bongos. And ever since, I was like, I fell in love with it. So that's your that's your nice. instrument of choice. That's my instrument of choice. I'm a, I'm a sucker for a bass line, but I'm a, I'm a percussionist. So in the spoken word, I started off doing raps, uh -huh. right? I started writing raps. Um, so just, Angel, Angel asked, "How do you get into spoken word? You don't have a mic, so if you're going to oh, talk, yeah. just ask him for the mic." No, no I, I, just, I just, I just repeated just so you can hear. It, just so you. So can how hear. did I get into spoken word? All right, all right. All right. So uh, let me know if you need this mic, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did I get? He's, into he's into spoken word, like for real. So just keep going. If you don't take the mic, from <laughs> hey, my, my wife tells me I'm, I'm long with it. She's like, please. <laughs> you got to catch up anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I uh, you know, not too long after I started, uh, I started playing. Um, I got into writing raps, right? And then uh, I always liked performing, right? I performed at home in the living room in front of nobody with my brother, this and that. So um, so I started writing when I was about 10 years old and just started trying to be big puns, trying to be, you know what I'm saying? Big L, you know what I mean? Okay. Trying to be these guys. And then, uh, and then uh, you know, a lot of those influences like that, a lot of lyrically heavy, sure. you know, writing and stuff like that. And that was my influences, man. And uh, so I got into writing. I was like, okay, let me get the, the longest word I can find and try to fit it in a rap. You know what I mean? And so, uh, uh, and that, that's how I, I got started. I started off rapping. And then I found a liberty in spoken word because I felt like with these big words that I'm trying to fit, it, it just didn't fit in this, this time sure. frame of sure. a beat. Sure. And after a while, I was like, man, you know, there's another art form of spoken word that has no beat that I'm free to do whatever I want. Say, I don't even have to rhyme if I don't want to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, although rhyming just ends up being a part of the scheme. And uh, um, so about five or six years ago, I wrote, I started writing uh, spoken word and I felt just this liberty. 
in writing. I was yeah. I could write anything, anything, sure. anything. You didn't and, feel uh, constricted by the beat. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, and and I still don't get me wrong. I still like rap. I watch battle raps. I still you know I listen to it. I yeah. write it. Um, but there's just something about this this free writing of spoken word and poetry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, and I just been doing it ever since, man. So it's it's just it's a big passion of mine. Sometimes I even feel like I speak in poetry. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I can't get nothing past my <laughs> wife, man. <laughs> you know I can imagine saying? this guy at home right. fighting, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't dropping, get nothing fast. She, she looks at me like, <laughs> you try you one gotta, of those. Uh, no, no, don't, don't pull out one of your pieces. Right, right, right. Spoken word voice. Put that spoken word voice away when you talk to me. I squint my eyes a little bit and I just you deepen my voice. He's not, he's not doing this thing. That's hilarious. Man, I can't get nothing fast. My wife, she's nice. So, man, Angel, um, tell us a little bit about where you're at with the with the tattoo now. Um, I don't know what what I can and cannot say, but you know, Angel's tattooed everybody from your uncle who's in the joint to to all-star football and baseball players and um, everybody, man. And so tell us a little bit about where you're at now and kind of where, where, where are you heading? Um, so where I'm at now is, so I opened up a studio, which was kind of like the biggest move. And that was just a couple years ago. Um, it seems like forever. You know, I, it does seem I'm like forever. How long, how long has it been? Two and a half years. Two and a half years? So, it does seem like a long time. And I'm there on a daily. So yeah. it's just like... It just seems like forever ago, but two years isn't a long time at all. And two years ago was basically the time that my social media influence became an impact on my art uh -huh. and my tattooing. Because before I had the studio, I wasn't able to promote and be out there like I am now. Because yeah. I was tattooing neither. Because before the studio, I was tattooing this kitchen. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were. I was tattooing. No, I was definitely tattooing the kitchen. <laughs> Don't tell me no, I got a tattoo from you. In the kitchen. Yeah, I got a kitchen, kitchen. Uh, yeah, no, I got, I got a kitchen <laughs> angel. I got both. a kitchen angel tattoo, so don't I say now. Nah. I <laughs> told you he was going to lie on the camera. I was tattooing <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but, uh, like, with you know, in doing that and not having your own space, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, not, yeah. it's not something that you could just, like, be out there, like. For sure. You know, so when I opened up the studio, it, it definitely helped allow me to, to expose myself and, to expose my art which yeah, is yeah, yeah. you know i didn't know that people watched what i was doing and now it's it's you know it changed definitely changed my life you know mm. a lot of people that i've met in the past few years you know have been telling me that they've been following me for a while so that's kind of where i am with that like the studio is just a it was just a, a huge platform for me to be able to 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 be out in so, the industry like i am so now. what's next so now is just conventions now Honestly, man, I'm super fortunate to have a career outside of tattooing um, where tattooing doesn't, I don't feel obligated or I don't feel like it's necessary or needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you don't do like, I, I'm coming in, I want. No, see, no, I, yeah, I don't do I want I lips do tattooed on my neck kind of kind of tattoos. <laughs> you can pick nah, and choose I, I, pretty much. Yeah, but, I don't, I don't yeah. do walking tattoos, but I, I definitely pick and choose everything I have. But it, it, I, it didn't have, it, didn't, it wasn't always like that, right? I had to be able to develop a style and you know, develop a following for someone to be able to be like, yeah, I want his style and his work as opposed to just, I want a tattoo and I want him to do it. For sure. You know, see, I don't, I, I can't do that just because I don't have the time to. So all the time that I have spending tattooing, I'd rather do something that I want to do. So, so yeah, now it's just uh, conventions. Um, and I was, I was saying, I'm, I'm fortunate to have a career along, uh, alongside tattooing um, that it will allow me to do more. Yeah. So more traveling, you know, more outside of tattooing, more vacationing. Um, but conventions is kind of my 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 next that big step. Sense. Okay. Um, just traveling the the world, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. I'm in a position where I can travel the world and make money. Yeah. Where not many people can travel the world to make money. People travel the world to experience. I can travel the world to experience and financially be stable in a different country. Yeah, I can yeah, go yeah. anywhere, especially doing web design. I can do that anywhere. I can do that from my desk, at, you know, in my hotel room. But tattooing also, I can go to any country. And there's tattoo shops, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and especially with social media, you know, I've, I've reached out to a lot of different countries and a lot of different places and a lot of different people, you know, would get a piece by me in a different country, which is kind of insane. So yeah, I got my passport a couple years ago, and now I'm, now out. I'm about to get some stamps on that <laughs> bad boy. Right. Next year, <laughs> next is, next year is the goal, man. So. Traveling the world. What's, what's the last? What's the last piece you did that was like super inspiring to you? That you did, you were just like, man, that was that that was dope. You know what? Honestly, I, uh, I hate. Yeah. Uh, Come on, man. 
don't. Man, I, I there's got to be something. There's not many pieces that I do that impact me. The pieces that I do impact the the, the, the received like person getting it. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I I don't know. I did a Hebrew piece. Like I th- I felt like that was that was a piece for a, a a person who was into the culture and knows that culture, and that specific culture is very big in in our in in Chicago and the surrounding areas. Um, that I think had a bigger impact on a lot of different people because uh-huh. I don't know it, it, that seemed like you know when people You're get this tattooed when people get, like, like the yeah, artist in Chicago, yeah. Right? Yeah. when people you know eventually when you start doing hundreds of these right yeah. all over the world people so are going to want somebody's going to get a fly boy somebody's going to get a fly boy somebody's going to want their own version space of space kit. Yeah. somebody's yeah. going to get a space, space kit, kit. Yeah. so space kit and that 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 impact that you create is crazy how would somebody gonna want that on their body for the rest of their life? Right, sure. right. Like right. That, that idea is just insane. It is. So I don't, I don't have any pieces that I've done that impact me. Or, okay. Yeah, that influence me. All the pieces I do, I, I put everything into it, and yeah, it's yeah, for yeah. them. That's awesome. For sure. That's awesome. So how about you, man? What's next? What are you working on? Man, right now, uh, I got a lot of little small stuff in the in the works. Uh, you know, but yeah, I kind of small. He's drawing chance this weekend. Yeah, that's right. yeah, that's Smart right. I'm at Wicker painting. Park right now this uh-huh. weekend. In the next couple of days, um, doing a chance to rapper mural. Uh, Where's that in Wicker Park? Yeah, Wicker Park. Yeah. Um, so that's what you're working on this weekend. Yeah, that's what I'm working on this weekend. But for for the future, I kind of just want to be able to create freely, man. Like Angel was saying, you know, to be able to to travel and maybe like put up a space kid. Like this one has the American flag on it. Maybe go to a different country, put up a space kid with like Belizean flag, oh, maybe. like a Belizean flag. Maybe, what you mean? maybe. a Mexican what you mean? flag. Maybe that should yeah, be like yeah, that should be like yeah. February. I'm right. going yeah, to Belize. I'm gonna put, that date I'm gonna put out. a Definitely. Belize calendar or Definitely. flag on the sky. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, that. That's 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 what it should be. Though. Like, like right. you have You're this, right. and this is yours. Just spread right. it, bro. Just spread Absolutely. it, man. Yeah, and, man. So you just, have the ability too to go to different countries and make money. Yeah. You know, get commissioned to do pieces or yeah. go to different cities and make money. You know. Absolutely. Uh, you you have that ability. So, Thank so. you. Yeah. So I just like like he said, I kind of just want to be able to create freely. Um, I kind of want to get a a piece of everything that has to do with art too. So maybe start tattooing soon. Okay. I might be an yeah. angels angel studio. Angel studio, soon. learning <laughs> learning learning from the master. Right. But uh, yeah. I kind of just want to hooking up a needle to, to a doorbell, yeah, to start off with. Right, you gonna shut him off with a doorbell hey, needle? Hey, <laughs> do what you gotta do. Yeah. So. Oh man, so That's, Eric, man, what are you working on right now? Uh, what's next? What, what What do you got going on right now? Um. So. Uh, so right now is for, I'd say since last September, I've been I've been doing a lot of writing to okay. work on a on a on an album. Okay. Um, spoken word album. Yeah, spoken word album. Oh, nice. Um. And uh, I, I want to make it like a kind of like a mixtape type, okay. you know what I'm saying? Because it's still a lot of hip hop influence. Um, but I've been I've been working on that. I've, I've been working on that very slowly. I've been really just honestly just taking my time. Like yeah, I yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I want to make sure that that what I you know what I put out lyrically and then what I pull out quality wise um, is is good. You For know sure. what I'm saying? And uh, uh, aside from aside from the writing, I'm, I'm making sure I'm actually a lot of the music that's being put. I want to play it myself too. Okay. So that takes time as well. So really, so you want to do the the, the, the instruments, percussion, bass lines, and whatever I can do and get my hands on, I will. And then uh, you know, I got a lot of really good friends that are musicians too that are help me with the rest. Um, so I'm working on that. Um, and uh, man, it, whenever people call me, I'm just like I look at the schedule, talk to my wife, and say, "Hey, man, let's go." Yeah. So I, um, I I did a showcase a couple weeks ago in in Chicago. It's called uh, the next next. Uh, next showcase Chicago uh-huh. um, that opened up a lot of doors for me to play at different festivals okay. uh, and do a lot of pieces in different festivals in the city um, uh, aside from that though it did open up a lot of doors for me to meet uh, a few people that can help with uh, some humanitarian stuff that I've been doing uh, especially in Puerto Rico okay um, getting some supplies out there with the, with the hurricane and yeah with the hurricane and stuff awesome, so man. the people are still hurting out there and hurricane season started up again June yeah, 1st man. you know what I'm saying there's still there's still mm-hmm. towns with no power sure um, I went out there a few weeks ago and uh, where we stayed the headquarters of the of the uh, organization that's in charge of what we were help what we were doing they they don't have power still yeah. so 
Um, so it's still a lot of hurting out there. Uh, um, uh, you know, it is a lot of good stories uh, of people you know getting out and being able to restore their homes, but there's still a lot of people who don't have yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. And so that's I think I think my biggest thing is you know being able to do the spoken word and the arts that I do to open doors for the other things that I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like for you know sure. with the career that you know what I'm saying like just just opens up doors of for other things that I have in mind that I want to be able to accomplish and Definitely. get my hand in. You know what I mean? So. Um, so yeah, those are the things that I have have uh, uh, on my plate coming up, man. Just a lot of writing, and uh, man, wherever Working wherever I, album, wherever man. my help help is needed, man. Seriously, so. that's cool, man. Yeah, that's cool. So who influenced you musically, man, growing up? Who's, oh man, who's, who's was, on your top five? Oh, top five. Um, Jeez, <laughs> oh, man, that's always hard. <laughs> that's, 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 that's always, always hard. It's, it's <laughs> always debatable, right? So it's always a good one. Um, so I. Uh, I love, I, like I said, I love Big Pun. It's not just because he's Puerto Rican, yeah, right? Is. I'm just saying yeah, it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Pitbull. Pitbull. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. He it's said Pitbull. Top five. <laughs> it's, not, it's top five. <laughs> Anyone from the Caribbean, that's <laughs> top five right there. Mark Anthony. His bars are ridiculous. Well, he's number four. Wait, wait, wait. So, wait, 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 wait. No, no. Okay, so Big big Pun. And uh -huh. I'm just going to go across the board. Okay, like, so not, like, not Not just hip-hop, okay, okay. right? So, no, no, no. You got you, you to go hip-hop. You got to go hip-hop. Want me to do top five hip-hop? Okay, so top five hip-hop. Uh, I do. Mm. I'm doing. Tread, tread yeah, tread lightly. <laughs> tread lightly. <laughs> big, big pun. Uh -huh. Um, and uh, and Tupac. Okay. Would be another one. Uh, Biggie would be three, close okay. three and four. I'm just waiting to snatch the mic out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then and then later later on, I really 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 fell in love with. Uh, uh, later on, I fell in love with Common and Most Def. Okay. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, you so, did all right. Yeah. He did it right. Was that, was so that you're, cool? And you're a little bit younger, man. What's your top five? What's your look like? Uh, I, I don't I don't know any Belizean right, any Belizean right, rappers, right, yeah. man. So no, I know no, you, no, who you gonna really. put on top of your list. <laughs> a little R.I.P. to AAA. Little Yachty. <laughs> yeah, nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> little Yachty. Little Yachty. Oh little, man. Nah, no, no, no. I'm just playing. Uh, top five, man. Man, I like top five. Top five. I will say Kanye okay. is up there. Okay. Um, you know. He's been influential on me. He was my first concert, so he's definitely up there. Uh -huh. um, we, we have interesting Kanye stories. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chance. Um, I like J. Cole. Okay. Uh, I'm not that big of a Kendrick fan. I feel like a lot of people like him, but uh, I like Drake. Okay. And uh, I'd say, I'd say, uh, Big Sean. Probably. Big Sean, okay. Yeah. For yeah. the for oh, the different scope. newer artists. Yeah, I do yeah. like like old school like you know, Tupac. Don't maybe. say old school, man. You're making this feel it's old, old man. School, bro. <laughs> yeah, no. I do like with the stuff my dad used to listen to. I wasn't even like, <laughs> I, I wasn't even born when Tupac I died. Know. So. Uh, what year were you born in? Ninety five. Holy cow. Yeah. Ninety five. Oh he, did he? Yeah, he man. died in ninety six. Yeah, 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 what, yeah. what do you remember when you were six months old, man? What's your five? Right, right, What's your five? He said it was September. I don't have a top five. I know. I know all of my, I listen to everybody. Uh, yeah, you're right. I I, you don't listen to everybody. I listen to a lot. Talk to the mic. Sorry, I listen to a lot. Who influences you? I don't have an influence in music, man. Why? It just depends on what I'm tattooing that day. Does Legit. It? How you like, feeling? I can listen right, to Metallica yeah. to listen to, yeah. if I'm doing like a skull or something, and I can listen to like some freestyle <laughs> if I'm doing some like script. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Same thing, yeah. It just, it just literally depends on what, oh, I, wow. what, I, what I'm doing that day. <laughs> <laughs> So get a little tear. Get a little yeah, no, nah, it definitely just take. depends yeah. on, on the mood. On like the mood. sometimes I could be listening to some Michael Jackson yeah, for yeah, like yeah, the yeah. whole like my whole session or like, you know, to some Chief Keef one day or yeah, like yeah. totally different. It totally varies. All over the place. Uh, yeah, some oh. reggaeton, some it, de it de really depends on the mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, So yeah. you know, we're talking about art, we're talking about, you know, these influences. Um is there any is there any other people or other things that you guys know that are going on in the community, um, art-wise or even not art wise that you guys want to either highlight? Because, um, you know, when we have these conversations in Waukegan, um, from an outside perspective, they're usually not positive. But, you know, being in the community, we see the impact that people are having. We see the things that people are doing. Um, and what I enjoy is that there seems to be a, a generation of folks or a spirit of people who, are, who see a need, who see a gap, and instead of talking about what isn't happening, they're kind of getting their hands dirty and saying, let's, let's, let's try to find solutions to the things that are happening, right? Whether it's with, with, with youth or, or whether it's with the school system, which obviously, you know, is, is, is a big issue in our community. Um, but is there some things that you guys see art-wise or even outside of art 
that you guys would like to highlight or, or, or people that, that you know are doing some things? Man, I kind of uh, I kind of want to give you a shout out, actually. Oh, don't um, do that. You know, you said don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, for real, man. Like, I remember when we went to the concert, you were telling me about the, the organization, that the stuff you're doing with the churches and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And and even having us here right now, you know I'm saying, to discuss some, some stuff about the community and, and, and our inspiration and stuff like that is, is huge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, having this video out there for for people to see is, is pretty yeah, dope yeah. and the fact that you came up with the idea and everything is, is awesome so thank you man. salute to yeah, you man, shout no, out to Raul. Yeah. thank you thank you Absolutely. man i appreciate yeah. that and, real MVP right and, and hopefully you know like you know I, I hope that this leads to different conversations right when we can take this beyond art you know we can have um different people from our community that are doing that are doing great things um and again go back to this representation idea right to be able to see people who, are, who look like you talk like you and who have similar experiences as you to be able to, to, to do that, I think, I think that's super valuable, man. And so like I, that's the purpose behind this is, is trying to, again, representation, man, being able to see yourself and people who grow up in your environment do things um, that can't impact things outside of just your community, you know what I mean? Right. Because, you know, just your idea of taking this and growing worldwide with it, Angel and his tattoos and going worldwide with it, and what Eric is doing and him being able to, you know, go beyond our circumstances beyond our communities man i think that's super valuable man yeah, how about you angel man anything you see in the community art wise or people wise that you can't shout me out again but if you want to you can you know I mean, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not gonna limit your shout out so nah go ahead no nah, i i don't i'm i'm a i keep my head down so i don't really okay. see too much i don't do anything okay um i mean just shout out to all the local business owners man i yeah. mean the people i mess with you know like they're their huge impact on the community yeah definitely, you know man. just straight young entrepreneurs and yeah. people wanted to you know maintain a, a, a positive outlook yeah like yeah yeah the barbershops bars definitely. you know all of that like that influences our community for sure definitely solid local business owners that i mess with and then yeah. you know for you for you know taking that step man thank I you mean, man Appreciate it's just that. important man so that's I'm glad you brought that up because that's what I hope the next conversation is, is is folks in our community who are entrepreneurs who have started their own businesses who have created and so for me I mean, we had this conversation about art being so much bigger and, and and how creativity really impacts our community and so somebody creating a business starting a business I mean that's all creativity and so the next conversation I would hope that we could uh, get gather some business owners so if you are from the community business owners. Um, Laquan, Alex, Martinez, those who are in the community, man, I'd love to sit down and have a conversation with you guys and, and just, you know, hear how this environment has, has impacted you and pushed you forward to be able to, to, to create something from nothing, which I think is so dope. Um, how about you, man? Um, so, hey, man, I, I uh, shout out to you as well. Come on, you know what I mean? No, seriously, man. Look, 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 look. His head getting a little bit bigger. Just a little bit bigger. No, no, no. So, no, seriously. <laughs> and it no, no, no. It's just, it's I'm just, ask the cameraman in a second too, so he can get four. Uh, it's ahead, just just for stepping out and, and putting this on a on a on a public, you know, long conversation forum. You know what I mean? Where where people can actually see the heart of the artist. Definitely. Um, and again, I'm gonna tag along with Angel said. You know, with the local artist man and and uh, uh, just local entrepreneurs, business owners, um, and uh, places like the mic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, it, it, art walk. I mean, there's a lot of little things that happen that that you know certain demographics just tie themselves to. But we just need to just go and expand. You know what I mean? And just expand our our, our, our thinking, our ideas. You know, and just be a part of these little things in the community that happen. Um, and then even just making your own lane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, um, creating. You, you want to see an event or. Of, of uh, you know whatever it is you want to make an event or because there isn't one make it just yeah, go out and step yeah, out and yeah, do yeah, it yeah. you see create, what I'm saying man, yeah yeah, yeah just yeah, create yeah. man so um, there's a lot of little you know things that are happening throughout the community um, like I said like art walk and and, uh, and stuff at the mic little open micers and stuff like that 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 we can all just be a part of and if you don't if you're not a creative and you enjoy it though yeah. man be a part support of it support it. Support, support, support big time yeah, there's a lot of like you said uh young entrepreneurs uh, apparel lines that yeah. that are local buy those local apparel lines yeah, man stop right. you know we giving money to all these big you know that's fine it's cool i, I get it right but at the same time yeah. support the local set, people spread yeah. the love man yeah. take some of that money allocate it to something local man yeah, you go know grab your angels tattoo grab your angels tattoo you know what i mean go grab it stop by the shop go ahead, go ahead, pick it up 
Coming out October 2018. <laughs> <laughs> take that, take that. <laughs> yeah, man. I feel like like when I was working on this mural throughout the process, it was like a five day, six day process. But every day I met somebody in Waukegan that would stop by and like tell me either tell me their story or tell me what they're doing or you know or support me. But I really didn't know that Waukegan had so many like dope people. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like just living here you know i kind of stayed to myself as well like like angel said you know but it's a lot of it's a lot of people trying to do stuff out here and, and, and uh, trying to put a positive impact and i feel like it's just not getting the the light that it needs to, to yeah, get yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying so uh like like he said support the local artists yeah. um support people who are tr- trying to do positive things and yeah man I, sure. like i said i didn't know there was so many dope people out here man yeah. shout out to everett yeah, man. Thank this man, this is awesome. a big stand. Like, <laughs> and you got this everybody. You got old Shout white ladies. Everybody. You got old white guys. You got <laughs> everybody <laughs> stopping by just yeah. being like, oh, this is crazy. We just yeah, had man. we just had a lady stop by, uh, just kind of admire it, and then just kept them moving, yeah. which is kind of cool, man. Yeah. So, I mean, that impact of what you did here, man, is, is pretty awesome, man. So, Thank yeah, you. definitely. Shout Thank out you. to Everett. Appreciate um, it. Well, man, I think we've had a really good conversation. I hope that this is the beginning of something and not, and not you know, the end of something. And uh, I hope that we can continue to have and create these spaces for these conversations, man. I hope that, you know, a month from now, there's something else that's dope that's happening in our community. Instead of being in front of the mural, we can be there and, right. and we can shed some light on that and continue to create these spaces, man. So, um, man, thank you guys so much for taking time out from your busy schedules uh, to make this happen. I know you're going to be in the city today tattooing. Uh, you're going to, I'm sorry, painting. Yeah, you're going to yeah. be somewhere tattooing for sure at some point, somewhere. And you'll Me. be somewhere uh, spoken <laughs> wording. As a matter of fact, wording. I will. <laughs> spoken wording. <laughs> and, uh, and so, man, thank you guys. Um, is there anything you guys want to say before we, uh, we wrap this up and, uh, and finish this off? No? Shout out to the mural, man. I think this is dope, man. Thank you guys, man. Thank you. Have a good one. Uh, peace out, man. Appreciate y'all.